In this lesson, we'll begin our review of Reading Test 8, Section 1, the first passage, which we know is a literature passage. And let's take a look at the reference information. This passage is from Carlos Ruiz Afron, The Angel's Game, published in 2008, and the translation in 2009 by Lucia Graves. The narrator, a writer, recalls his childhood in early 20th century Barcelona. And so this is really the most important part, to give you some context of the passage because especially with these literary passages it, it's first person and, and you're not really sure who's speaking and, and what the setting is and so that's why you want to pay attention and I'm not going to read this I assume you have read this but I'm just going to review it in the beginning even then m m my only friends were made of paper and ink at school I learned to read and write long before the other children where my school friends saw notches of ink on incomprehensible pages I saw light streets and people and so right away it really demonstrates the passion that this young child this boy has for reading and there's lots of detail here and then toward the end he his favorite place in the whole city was Semper and Sons this bookshop and the um, the bookkeeper let him stay and read books didn't charge him anything and uh, it was really like his, his, the boy's way to escape. And then one Christmas, Semper, that's the owner of the bookstore, gave him the best gift he's ever received. It was great expectations from Dickens. And he immediately felt that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to be a writer. And so, you know, again, hopefully you've read that and you sort of have an understanding. I strongly recommend when you answer the questions not to do them in order. We're going to do the We'll do them in order for the review here, but I recommend doing the specific questions first and then the general ones. All right, so, you know, this question, I think this passage wasn't too difficult, but if they're more difficult, this that method I think really will help. So number one, over the course of the passage, the main focus shifts from what? And this is a general question. We're gonna do it now, but in the beginning, it really described all about these first several paragraphs about his love for reading and uh, his father, really didn't have an idea that he was reading and uh, it was his escape. So that was really sort of a general description of how he loved to read. But then we have this, this uh, notable experience when he was given Dickens great expectations. So let's take a look at the answer choices. General discussion of the narrator's love of reading to a portrayal of an influential incident. This looks good. It definitely, his love of reading was at the beginning. And a lot of times with these general questions, they don't, they, they never will specifically say an incident where he received great expectations and he be, wanted to become a writer. It's much too specific. So they don't even say it, it's a gift or it's any reference to the gift and, and how it changed him and, and what he wanted to become. They just call it an influential incident. But this is the right answer, right? General discussion of his love to an influential incident. And so the answer is A. Question two, the main purpose, but we have some direction. It's in the very beginning, one to 10. What's the purpose or the function? So this is really a specific question because they're telling us where to find it in one to 10. So let's see what the, the main purpose of the first 10 lines are. We'll go back and read. Even then, my, only my friends were made of paper and ink. At school, I learned to read and write long before the children. I saw these lights and streets, words and mystery. Hidden science fascinated me, and I saw in them a key with which I could unlock a boundless world, a safe haven from that home, those streets, those troubled days in which even I could sense that only a limited fortune awaited me. And so what's the purpose of this? It's really describing how much he loves reading. Let's see if we can find the answer. Introduce the characters who play a part in the story. There's no introduction of characters. He's referencing settings from descriptions, but that's not the answer. List the difficult conditions the narrator endured. Now, even though at the end he said that a fortune doesn't await me, this is not listing the difficult conditions. It's really about his love of reading. Describe the passion that drives the actions the narrator recounts. This is good. It's, it's general. But the passion is his love for reading that drives the actions. All right, so that one is C. Let's take a look at question three. And remember, always scan down. We see three and four is a two-part question. And so we're going to do, we'll read this question, but we know that the evidence is bound between 24 and 61. And we're looking for which of the following statements about his father 
would the narrator most likely agree? And we're looking for the evidence here. This one's a little bit more difficult because it's not, they're just, usually with these questions, it, it might be more specific where you're looking for the evidence in, in terms, but they're just saying which of the following would he most likely agree? So in this case, if you watch these videos, I tell normally it's students, to find the evidence, but we don't have enough description here to see what we're looking for. We're just seeing what the narrator agrees with. And so we have to look at these choices. He lacked affection for the narrator. He disliked any unnecessary use of money. He would not have approved of Semper's gifts or he objected to the writings of Charles Dickens. And so you wanna be careful here. Again, obviously you've read this and I mean, there really was no evidence about him lacking affection. Now, even if it's an inference question, right, there has to be some inf some evidence. And we that wasn't given there at all. I think that we can save for the limit of this right away. He disliked any unnecessary use of money. Well, when the father did give him money, if you recall, so around 25, my father was not a miser. And despite the hardships we suffered, whenever he could, he gave me a few coins so that I could buy some some myself some treats like the other children he was convinced that i spent them on licorice sticks sunflower seeds or sweets but i would keep them in a coffee tin under my bed and when i collected four or five reels i secretly rush out to buy myself a book okay so his father did give him money right and so is there evidence he disliked any unnecessary use of money no that's not the answer here he would not have approved of semper's gift and so obviously the evidence for this will be after the gift and so Remember, the gift was toward the end. It was around 55. And so if we look here, this is the end of the passage. That afternoon, I took my new friend. The new friend is just a metaphor for Dickens's great expectations. Home, hidden under my clothes so my father wouldn't see it. All right, so there. This is evidence. Even though it's not stated, it's inferred. Why is he hiding it? His father probably wouldn't approve of, of having this book. And if you look at the choices in three, he would not have approved of the gift. The gift was great expectations. This looks good. Or he objected to the writings of Charles Dickens. Is there any evidence at all that he objected specifically to, to Dickens? That he didn't even know Dickens? There's no evidence of that at all. He just would not have approved of the gift if he's hiding it from his father, the book, the gift, not the actual like, specific author and, and the work. And so this one is C, and we had found the evidence here. So we did this a little out of order compared to the way we usually do it based on the question. And so the answer is 59 to 61. So my father wouldn't see it, it is D. And we'll do one more question in this video. We'll do number five. It can, actually, I just look down. We're gonna do two more <laughs> because it's another best evidence question. Do five and six. It can reasonably be inferred from the passage that the main reason the narrator considers great expectations for the best gift he ever received is why. Now here, this is more of a typical two-part question. We can find the evidence because we have some direction as to what we're looking for in five. So we know the evidence is between 38 and 68. Why does the narrator consider great expectations to be the, the best gift ever? And so this is going to be toward the end when he received it and it's between 38 and the end of the passage and so if you start at 38 here it says semper gave me the best gift but we still we, we look for some evidence as to why so he just calls it the best gift but it doesn't really state why i read it i was aware he knew a few authors he's a friend of yours we still don't have evidence of why he considers it the best gift ever i took it home so my father wouldn't see it was a rainy expectation I read it nine times. I had no other book at hand, partly because I did not think there could be a better one in the whole world. And I was beginning to suspect that Mr. Dickens had written it just for me. Soon I was convinced that I didn't want to do anything else in life but learn what to do what Dickens has done. This is the evidence explaining why. He loved it so much, he wanted to become a writer. And this is where you find the evidence. Not just because you see the word best gift, this is the explanation as to why. And so it's right at the end for the evidence. It's 66 to 68. This is for number six. And why he considered it the best gift ever? Reading the book convinced him that he wanted to be a writer. All right. And so the answer here is A.